Jersey baseball show as we approach the start of the 2022 high school season. It's Mike Olshan. We're here with Austin Sofran, the outstanding senior catcher, as he is proudly repping St. Augustine Prep High School, one of the favorites to uh, to bring home or take home the top spot in the, the New Jersey state rankings and state titles at the end of the year. Welcome, Austin, and uh, thanks for coming on today. Thanks for having me on. I'm super excited. Absolutely. We'll uh, talk about a lot of high school baseball, and we'll talk about. Uh, I guess we're going for a six peat this year in South Jersey, right? Is uh, what the, the the I don't know what you got to come up with a better name than that, obviously. But um, you know, we'll talk about a lot of uh, great pitching that you'll be uh, catching this year as we get into the show. Let's start off really quick with uh, Shepherd University, your school next year. I know that you've got an older brother down at uh, Washington College down in Maryland. Um, so what kind of tilted everything to, to Shepard at the end and, uh, playing in the, in the PSAC and playing probably the best D2 conference, um, certainly the best cold weather D2 conference in the country, but, but probably one of the top, you know, one or two, uh, overall. Yeah. Um, I had some interest in, uh, Washington college, obviously my brother there and, he really was pushing for me to go and play and, you know, play with him for his last season as a senior next year. But um, he actually came with me on my tour to, uh, to Shepard. And, you know, after that, it was kind of the, the situation where he was like, it's up to you, man. I, I do like the school as well. And so I kind of decided that the PSAC was the place for me. And, you know, Coach Matt and Coach Pat are two great guys. And I'm super excited to play for them next year. You can turn the table on your brother and say he could do a grad, you know, be a grad transfer there eventually and play with you. Yeah, he's uh, he's planning on going to grad school. So wherever he goes, tell him to start looking at those grad programs at Shepherd, and, you know, maybe yeah. maybe we turn the table on him and get get, get you guys together one last year. Yeah, that would be sweet. Um, St. Augustine is, you know, one of the elite programs in New Jersey. Um, state finalist five years in a row, uh, lost a tough one to a pretty ridiculous St. Joseph's regional team last year. And, and Sean Hart, who was, you know, drafted and, uh, you know, now at Boston college, um, certainly great pitcher, um, get us excited. We're, we're, you know, in the preseason, you know, pitchers and catchers every day, whole team, get us excited for, for this year. You know, we definitely um, we have a really strong team again this year. We uh, we lost Jackson Vanesco, who was our you know our ace pitcher at Bryant now, as well as ja, Jack Peacock and then uh, Brody McKenzie, who's at Rhode Island. So it's definitely uh, a tough loss with those three, but I think we're coming back even stronger this year. Got some young guys, Marco Lavari, who's going to be a stud on the mound. So is CJ Fury, and so uh, they're going to pair really well with our uh, our seniors that are coming back for their last season. And uh, 14 seniors this year, so big graduating class. And it's uh, definitely going to be a treat to watch, I think. Yeah, you've uh, – and it's going to get started with some fun soon, right? You, We haven't – you know, we got to talk about where you guys are headed shortly. Right. So uh, as soon as tryouts are over this year, we're going over to Myrtle Beach. We're going to play, I think, uh, four games down there. So super excited. I'm not sure what the schedule looks like yet, but – I know that uh, there are going to be some strong teams down there to play. And then after that, we got some scrimmages lined up. Definitely uh, one to watch is against Bishop Eustis. So that's going to be a good one. I'm excited to uh, open up with a strong team this year. And then obviously some other games that we're going to watch. You want to watch are the Gloucester Catholic, you know, coaches versus cancer coming back. 
And then uh, the Thank You Classic as well, we'll play our Rancocas Valley. So those are some two good games to see. Yeah, I know. Uh, so so some teams do their scrimmaging in 40 degree weather or whatever. You guys are getting to go down to South Carolina as a team and uh, getting some uh, some good team work in to, to play your, your scrimmages down there. Have you guys, you know, the fact that you really haven't been able to the last couple of years, right? COVID wiped out 2020. And, you know, last year, get to play a season, but it was like a crazy, like, let's play five games every week season and get everything in. And like, it seemed like about a second and a half, you know, just to be able to have that full, like full ride your last year, make that trip together. Does it make it more exciting and kind of more fun than it would be if you were doing it every year? Uh, I think so. I mean, definitely. Uh starting in April last year, put a, uh, a little different type of feel on the season. It felt pretty rushed and uh, we were still able to, you know, have a good season, but I think having March this year and being able to go down to Myrtle beach, it's going to give us a good start and a, a nice base to go off. See what we need to work on. Yeah. What's uh, what's the best part of these team uh, team trips? Um, I think after the games, you know, in between, just kind of being together as like a family, you know, with all the seniors we have this year, it's our last ride. So we're definitely going to use as much time together as we can to like build our relationships and finish the season strong towards the end. Yeah. It's kind of a, you know, knowing that you guys are going to have these stories for uh, forever to tell, right. It's uh, yeah, you know, um, crazy. You've got a great team. You know, you're, I've never seen, so I've been doing this for more years than I want to admit. Um, you know, any, any, I don't have a whole lot of like, uh, you know, where you've got so many guys who are legit D1 level or already D1 committed, just flat out, you know, stud. Um, what's it like catching them? Um, it actually makes it a little bit easier on me. You know, they're, they're good in the, those tense, you know, situations and they, they're pretty good at keeping their uh, keeping their cool, so it makes it a little bit easier for me. And I'll have to you know call time and go go talk to them and talk them off the ledge. But it's definitely um, it helps us in a way because when we're going against these other teams, they're like, "Wow, they got this guy or this guy on the mound," and so it kind of gives us a little bit of an edge because you know they're worried about who we're gonna throw. So I think it uh it gives us some confidence. It gives me confidence in my guys, you know, that I I know they can get the job done if they're going to be playing next year at such a high level and so it's definitely um definitely good for me you feel like you know as a, you're going to a great conference next year you know at, at shepherd playing in the uh even though they're in west virginia they're still in the uh the pennsylvania state athletic conference um i'm not sure how that works i don't you know we're, we're gonna have to call them a pennsylvania school or something um, but you know, playing in and playing in the Eastern Division too, let alone playing like you know, but but you'll be coming back to the area a lot, you know, whether it's Westchester, whether it's you know, Millersville's a drivable trip, whether it's um, you know, East Stroudsburg is drivable. Um, like I said, Westchester, Millersville, is that something that you're excited for? And you know, just the fact that, like I said, Shepard's kind of far, but there's going to be a lot of games where we're family and they can come watch you play. Yeah, no, I'm definitely um, excited to be somewhat closer to home. It's about a three-hour trip for me to Shepard. So, you know, when I do get to play Millersville or Westchester, it'll be a good chance for my parents to come watch. And it maybe even my brother, he's not too far. So I think that it's, um, you know, it's a good position for me to be in. I'm not super close to home where I feel like I'm the, staying at home or coming home on the weekends. But um, I'm definitely uh, super excited to be, you know, in West Virginia. It's a great, it's right on the Potomac, the school. So it's a really nice area, but definitely getting to play, you know, Millersville, great team, as well as East Stroudsburg and Westchester. Those kind of being a little bit closer to home, it'll be easier for me to like feel comfortable in the situation and know how people watching me. Yep, yep. No, how were, when did you seriously get into catching? I, I've been catching my whole life. Um, okay. Obviously, when I was younger, I didn't really care for it too much. Um, 
And as, you know, travel goes on, you play so many games, you eventually just start to fall in love with the position. So yeah. that's kind of where I went. And I feel like it is, you know, it's a grueling position to play. You're getting hit with balls. I mean, you got to control the game, but it's definitely a good spot for me. And I like to be in control of the game. So that's kind of where I started to enjoy it the most. Yeah, I was going to say, it, at some point along the way, it goes from like, you know, that's the position. First of all, like that's the position we put you if you can't catch in the field when you're really little and it's like right. coach pitch. And then it becomes, well, you've got a good arm you can catch because, you know, people are going to start to steal or whatever. But, you know, once the, once the field gets bigger, right, I mean, that's when you kind of get to be in control of everything. And that's when I think guys really start to like love, you know, you might not have liked it that much when you started, but by the time you get older, you don't do it unless you love catching. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think that it becomes, you know, less of like a, uh, like a job, like not, not more, it's not much, it's not really a job for me anymore. You know, it's kind of, it's like what I want to do. Not everybody wants to have to block balls and get yelled at by their pitcher if they're uh, not doing the right thing. So it's definitely, it takes a lot of craft and you got to put a lot of time into it. So that's kind of where I, I strive as I, I put a lot of time into it. So yeah. Catchers start to love all that stuff. They love the, uh, the abuse and the, and the cat, you know, getting dirty and the balls in the dirt and all that stuff. Yeah. And, um, do you take the leadership part of it really, you know, seriously too? I mean, you kind of have to with, with so many guys who are potentially so good too. And, and how do you, you know, how do you try to like control, you know, or keep guys, you know, focused or keep guys under control and, and, and stuff like that. Yeah. So, you know, all the pitchers we have, we got a ton of them. They all have their own type of personality and, I kind of have to approach it each situation a little bit differently. You know, who can take the e telling them what to do or like some kids you have to baby, but um, that's definitely, it's a lot of a mind game when you're, when you have to talk to your pitchers and you have to figure out really what's going on and how to control them. And that, that takes a while, you know, bullpens, you know, talking to them about their pitches and like what everything looks like. That's a big part of it. I think that's something I enjoy doing is breaking down how a pitcher you know, reacts in a situation. That's definitely big for me. And I, I like to focus on that to figure out how to assess an issue. And you can't lose your head ever when you're the guy. No, not at all. It seems like that fits your personality pretty well at this point. Yeah. I try my best to keep my cool. Um, when I was younger, obviously if something would go wrong and then I'd bring it back onto the field with me, it wouldn't go so well. And so as you get older, you start to realize that you kind of just have to drop it after it happens. And reset when you get back behind the plate yeah now you're a uh, you're part of the scanzano crew right the scanzano family combat yep. baseball tell us about the impact that that's had on you and you know obviously your brother as well right i mean anthony played there as a uh, you know as growing up but you know the impact that they've had on you not just as a player on the field but also a uh, you know a, a person a leader yeah so they definitely um Coach John, he's a great guy. He uh, he really focuses on, you know, teaching people the game. And even as you get older, you got to know how to play the game the right way. And so that kind of shapes you into like a better leader on the field, I would guess. And then, you know, right off the bat, they take you in as, as such a family. You know, they're, they're all about being positive and having the right people around you. And that's kind of why, uh, why I just I like Coach John so much is because he's really strong on having the right people around the kids as well as, you know, when you get older. And that definitely plays a part when surrounding yourself with others. When you like, when I leave scans, you know, I want to be around the best people to play with. Mm -hmm. And I think that he builds his teams and the, you know, the best for whoever's on that team and how they're going to, how they're going to play is based off, you know, who he has coach and everything like that. I feel like that kind of stuff can carry over outside of baseball too. Yeah, definitely. You know, it, it really teaches you how to, kind of surround yourself with the right people, even, you know, in like a job or a business, you know, you want to be around people that are positive mm -hmm. and kind of build you up and so for you. All right. So now we got the good questions. Um, great staff, right? So, so I'm going to have you kind of word association with them and what's like the first thing that comes to mind when we, when we talk about these guys and I'll let you kind of 
go whatever direction you want. But, um, you know, we've got the uh, the seniors, first of all. And, uh, you know, we'll start with, although he's not probably going to be out on the mound as much as he would be at other places. Um, because A, you got so many, but B, because he's so good in the field as a two-way player, but uh, but Ryan Weingartner. Um, you know, I think of Ryan, especially on the mound, he's probably the most calm out of all of our guys. He's been playing varsity since he's since he was a freshman. So he definitely he knows. Much, right? Yeah, he's he's been out there forever. So he knows, you know, what's going on. And he's definitely got one of the best mechanics on the team. And that kind of helps him a lot. And he's really good in tense situations. And then we go from Ryan to the the tall uh, lefty, Holden DeJong, and uh, Holden going to NJIT next year. Yeah, Holden, um, definitely. I think he's underrated, honestly. He um, he threw for us a little bit last year, but th- he's improved a lot over the winter. I think he's up to 90 maybe from the left side, so that's definitely going to be good for us this year to add on to the staff, so I'm super excited for him. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, so tall and skinny lefty to uh, to Andrew. Andrew Gaines, who who looks great, by the way, he's got himself in uh, great shape, and uh, I mean, it's it's a lot of talent there. Yeah, Gaines is definitely crazy. He's um, <laughs> he's uh, he's one of the guys that you look at in the mound, and you get pretty scared. He's huge, so he's definitely um, towards the end of the season, you know, I would talk to him a lot, and he was just we were just having issues with trying to figure out, you know, the mindset, and he was struggling a little bit, but I think he's going to do great this year. Um, you know, he's been going to BPC, getting a lot of work in. I'm going to catch him on Friday to see how he's doing. So I'm super excited for him, you know, back up to 90. That's all yep. that matters. Yep, and exactly. And he's got his, you know, he's set with Iona now. So I think he's in a really good place to, to yep. just like, can, you know, stand out this year, I think. Yeah, um, for sure. We got your juniors. We got uh, the latest Lavari coming through St. Augustine and Marco, who is also going to Old Dominion, but uh, throws hard. Yeah, Marco is definitely competitive too. He's uh, He's got a good mindset. He actually threw, he closed for us in the state championship and was lights out. He did really well. And uh, last year, even being young, he, he definitely filled his position the right way. And he's uh, coming up to the ranks. So I think he'll be a, uh, Another great addition. He'll get a lot of games this year. Yep. And CJ Fury um, going to Villanova. Yeah, sneaky lefty. He's not super tall, but he's built and he's uh, he's throwing hard. So I think CJ is going to do really well this, this year. He, uh, he played a lot for us last year. And so I think that he's going to get some innings and he's going to do really well as well. And we got two righty juniors who, who have looked like awesome in the offseason. And, you know, again, I don't know. But it might be committed by the time this gets on the air um, because they're both, uh, again, should, would be dominating pitchers, I think, in a lot of places. But Bruce Wadiak and, uh, and Cole Fry. Yeah, so I'll start with Bruce. I mean, me and Bruce, great friends. You know, I've played with that kid forever. So I've definitely – I got a good connection with Bruce. And uh, last year, I mean, he was throwing hard. He was having issues around to get around the plate. But this year he's been working just like Gaines, you know, getting his mindset right and he's up to 90 as well throwing hard throwing strikes so that'll be a big a big piece he's definitely one of the guys that you know I like to talk to and you know make sure he's in the right mindset and that he's going to do well and then um Cole Fry I've been playing with him forever as well since we were young and great great righty big tall guy so he's slinging on the mound definitely looking pretty good in the all season so super excited for him as well so it's it's not just so many guys who are so good. It's like they're all they're all they all got like a different look to them, you know. Yeah, just, they're uh, definitely have you know some sneaky guys that throw throw pretty hard. But then there's you know our big lanky pitchers that control the game well and that uh, definitely put an impact on the field. Yeah, it's like you want it, as a coach. I know that's always fun to like. How do you want to match up against guys? Because there's so many different matchups you can go with. For a catcher, is that fun, easy, difficult? I mean, what's uh, and 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 certainly if you say difficult, nobody's going to feel sorry that you're catching studs every right. any season. But you know, what's it like as a catcher with so many different looks? 
Um, I think it actually, you know, it, it keeps the game interesting depending on who, who coach wants to put in or if we're trying to save an arm for something. But, you know, my main goal is just if we're riding the guy out, keep him, keep him moving, good, good tempo to keep him throwing hard strikes. But um, I like how we have a lot of pitchers. We can do a ton of different matchups. So it's not like you keep looking at, you know, St. Augustine and they keep throwing the same three guys. We got a bunch of, we got a bunch of guys that can throw at any time in the game. So that definitely plays a big role in our, our staff. Yeah. And, and some guys with, uh, you got guys with pop, you got guys with ridiculous speed. You got, right. You got Ryan and, uh, and Josiah who yep. are, are, well, who's, I guess Ryan's faster, but I wouldn't want to race either one of them. No. Nah, yeah. They're definitely, you know, we got some, we got a lot of speed on this team and, they also have pops, so they can they can do a little bit of everything. But with having, you know, we have such a deep, deep amount of seniors. We have 14 seniors this year. So it's definitely um, going to be a lot of older kids on the field mixed in with some younger guys. So that plays a part. You know, you got some big guys that are going to be hitting bombs. And then you have our fast guys that can hit bombs, you know, hit liners in the gap, and run around the bases, especially, you know, Josiah and Ryan. Yeah, no, it's a. Uh... A lot of fun coming up ahead. I mean, it's to to go through with with these guys, and like you, you said, there's there's 14 seniors and and a couple of juniors who reclassed that could have been senior class could have been even bigger. Right. Right. Um, Got to be fun every day. Yeah, it's, it's great. You know, practices are are usually boring. You know, if you're not having fun, so you got so many guys that are all different personalities, it makes it fun. And that's a big part of, you know, kind of building our team and our mentality, especially, you know, last year we were so young. We didn't, we didn't even know how the season was going to go. And as we kept winning and winning, we game came closer as like teammates and, you know, we were hanging out outside of baseball and really connecting and building our bond to uh, move the team forward. How much of an impact on you did, was it seeing your brother kind of go through the same thing, you know, a couple of years ahead of you? Uh, I definitely, you know, I looked up to him, obviously. So I watched as many games as I could. And then, um, you know, when I was a freshman, he was a senior. So I got to see him practice and I saw how he would act. You know, he's kind of a quiet kid on the field. But when he when it came to showing out, he, he did what he needed to do. So it kind of broke my heart when he, t- when he turned from a uh, an outfielder to a PO because he, he hit bombs from the left side. So I uh I definitely now do a lot of work with him pitching, so that helps. And it helps him, I'm sure, to, to always know he's got somebody to throw to. Yeah. Um, all right, important stuff. If you get to be in control of uh, pregame music, what are we listening to? Pregame music. It's hard. You know, last year, Bruce Wadiak was in charge of pregame music, so it was a lot of, a lot of rap. And uh, we had the same set of songs for every game. And as soon as I, I forget what the last song was, but once I heard that song, I knew it was time to lock in after uh, they did IO. But, um, you know, just rap probably. It gets everybody going. You're not, you're letting Bruce be in charge again? Yeah, I think so. He does a pretty good job. <laughs> Favorite sports team? Um, San Francisco Giants. Why? I mean, I mean, they're good, but how, you know, it's obviously not, the normal choice from uh, living in South Jersey. How'd that happen? Uh, so I was actually born out in Nevada. So I like a lot of the out West teams, you know, the 49ers and the Giants. So absolutely, that's my, that's my guys. Well, it's, it's legit. That's fine. You're allowed. You're allowed. But, but it's uh, kind of cool to, to hear why. So you were born out, out in Nevada. And how long did you live there? Um, I lived there for like two years and then uh, we moved out, but I, uh, go back all the time you know visit family go skiing up there so favorite is that your favorite sport other than baseball yeah i'm a pretty good snowboarder so that's my thing so you might be somebody a rare person who likes the winter sports as much as the uh the summer ones then yeah i do i definitely like the snowboard um obviously the winter olympics are really good for me i like watching that you know the x games and all the uh all the snowboarding stuff so keeps it interesting Favorite place you've gone snowboarding? Um, 
out west in Nevada, there's this place called North Star. It's uh, right by Lake Tahoe. It's one of the best mountains I've ever been to. It's great. How big? Big. It's pretty big. I'm not sure how big, but it's huge. Kind of make you miss it around here then? It just doesn't quite compare? Yeah, I, uh, I take advantage of those out west trips as much as I can with the snowboarding. So. West Coast snow different than, than East Coast snow when you go out to like the mountains? Like it's a little more, it's just better. Like here, it just seems like it's all man-made and ice and packed down. And Yeah, depending on the, uh, on the, on the you know, the, the winter we're having out here is definitely not as good as um, out West. They got a ton of snow, especially by like Lake Tahoe. But um, it's a little bit of a different cold to me. You know, out here is a little bit colder than out West, so. I like out west a little bit more. It's like more sunny and cold out there. Yeah, it actually um it gets really warm out there when you're snowboarding. Even like right about now, it's uh obviously they go past Easter snowboarding and skiing out there. So it's pretty nice when you're spring skiing. I can hear in your voice how excited you are. When's the next trip out there after baseball? Uh, I hope so, maybe. <laughs> so what do you do out there in the summer? Um, normally just visit family, go to the lake. Uh, but most of the time we go out there during March and, uh, get some, get some skiing and see family. And then, uh, we come back. It's a big one, like the fishing and stuff like that too, in the summer. Yeah. Uh, water skiing, any of that stuff. Yeah. A little bit of wakeboarding out there as well as, uh, down the ocean city here. So I like yeah. the water. All these, all these things sound great, but I don't know that there's any of it in West Virginia. Uh, there's some, I think there's some snowboarding in West Virginia. There might be some. I think there's a mountain actually pretty close to Shepherdstown, but there's a, a little bit in the middle of nowhere in West Virginia. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll find something. You will. Absolutely. Um, favorite subject in school? Uh, I think math. All right. Math. What's the plan to, uh, to major in then? Uh, I'm majoring in business. Uh, or economics somewhere around there. And then depending on how I like that, maybe law school or something after that. I'm not sure yet. You take that math and apply it to making money then is what you're going to do with it. Yeah, money. something in business. Absolutely. So so Shark Tank, you will be on that show someday or not really? Uh, I think I'll be the investor. That's the goal. I want to be okay. the investor, not the company. So you you will be you will be on Shark Tank, but you'll be sitting next to, to Mark Cuban is what you're saying. Yeah. That's the I goal. Like I like it. Um, favorite, or I guess, no, let me ask that in a better way. What are you going to miss most about New Jersey? You're not that far away in college, but what are you going to miss most, most about Jersey life? Um, I'm not sure. You know, I, I love Jersey, but I think I'm ready to get out. Um, obviously, I'm going to miss my family when I'm at school, but maybe just being at prep is probably what I'll miss the most. It's a, you know, a decision to go there, obviously. It's not a, a public school. It's, it's a, a, a private school. Looking back on it, you feel like that was one of the best decisions that you've ever made. Yeah, for sure. You know, my parents sent my brother there and a lot of our friends go there. So it was kind of just a no-brainer to send me there as well. And sure. they helped me through everything. So it's definitely a big family at, at prep. And they're really supportive with uh, whatever you decide to do. Gonna make a six peat this year? Um, I hope so. I think it's ours, you know. It's gonna be tough though. Same team, it's gonna be really tough. There's a lot of good teams, so I'm hoping we make it. We win, stay chip coming after it. So right. as we won the last last game of your high school career has gotta be a win, right? Yeah, I hope so. That's the goal. Um last year, you know, it was I was one of the last people off the field. So it's uh Definitely on the top of my list right now as a state championship. Uh, if it's this year, it's because it's a dog pile and you're gonna be at the one of the last you're catching the last pitch or something. Yeah, I'm I'm throwing my glove up with the ball. That's right. That's right. Austin Stofran, our guest today, Jersey baseball show, St. Augustine, one of the top high school teams in the state in the area. Um, we appreciate you coming on and uh thank you. Can't wait to see you get after it on the field this year. Yep, super excited. That's our show today. We look forward to seeing everybody out in the field as we get closer to the start of the season. April 1st is just around the corner. 
Austin will be back with a nice tan because it'll be about 80 degrees down in South Carolina while we're all shoveling snow, but uh, we still like them anyway. Wish you guys the best and uh, look forward to getting out to uh, St. Augustine baseball this year. Thank you.